good morning, afternoon, evening. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. All right. So this is a Dave Ramsey. I titled, let's see, I co-signed a $223,000 loan and I'm not paying. So judging from the title, I'm assuming this person co-signed a $223,000 loan and they are refusing to pay. So let's find out why. Most likely because they don't have the money, but I'm sure there's more tea than that. Let's hit it. Gray is with us in Canada. Hi, Gray. Welcome to the yeah, Dave Ramsey hi. Show. Hi. Thanks for having me. Sure. How can I help? Yeah. yeah so I um, have a question. So back in 2013, I lost my dad, and shortly after, I made the huge mistake of co-signing with my mom and my brother for a medical school for my brother. Okay. So she. Co so her dad passed away in 2013. This video is just the is just before the pandemic. So this this video is four years ago. So 2013, she signs. Um, she co-signed a student loan for to for her brother to go to medical school. Why is I wonder how old she is. Um, well, within the five next five to six years, I was always um, giving money to my family because I was single. Always giving money, never prioritized my needs or what I felt to gain the situation. So I got married two years ago. Okay, she's she, this is actually on normal speed, so I just make sure I'm following this. So. She co-signs this loan. She says she's never um, thought about her own needs. And she sounds like she's constantly giving money to her family because she's single. And of course, um, priorities shifted and I had a child and, you know, we started planning for our family, our future. And, and this people, I can tell you right now is why you don't co-sign loans. And I've said it before and I will repeat it. The only people that should co-sign is parent to child. That is it. Siblings should not co-sign for each other. Boyfriend, girls, friends should not co-sign for each other. Best friends should not co-sign for each other. When you sign on a loan, and this this is 223 grand. Good Lord. That just like hit me again. Okay. Almost another quarter of a million dollar loan. Quarter million dollars. Darn. I might as well just throw in the interest. You know, I'm a rounded up gal. I'm a rounded up gal. This is, we're, we're, we're talking, this is shy of a quarter million with interest and all of that stuff. But, okay, 223000 And, of course, her life priorities change. So, so she said she got married and she's, they're having a child, or they had a child. This tells me she's young. She, nobody should be signing off on, on a student loan for anybody. Just co-signing a loan, period. No one should do it. Parent to child, that's it. And that's only if the parent and the child, that's only if the parent thinks the child's responsible enough and would the parent hold grudges if the child never paid them back. And does the parent, and does the child paying the parent back um, kill the parent's retirement account? And, uh, two months ago, we bought our home. Um, uh, we're making decent income. Um, so now my family keeps demanding for money, still demanding for money, even when we're, even when I've told them I don't have uh, much because I just came off mat leave a year ago and I'm still, we're still trying to get our finances. Why do they think they have a right to your money? Thank you. Yeah, exactly. What, what, what makes them think that they're so superior to, you know, to, why, why shouldn't they be working for their money? Exactly. I... And I think no, no, okay, no, it wasn't. A, wasn't a, it wasn't. A, it wasn't a passive aggressive statement. I'm curious, <laughs> Wh whose parents or brother or sister think they have a right to your money to demand money from you? That's so strange. It is strange, and it's led to mean calling. And I've distanced myself because I feel very toxic, and I have, I have chosen to prioritize my family. Yes. Yes. You know, just because you're related doesn't mean you have to spend the holidays together. Some family is toxic. What's sad is she's on the hook for a quarter million for her brother to become a doctor. Is there a contract to pay her back after he gets his doctor job? I'm assuming medical doctor. I'm assuming. Three times my needs. Um and I believe my brother, who is 29, um, rounding off his medical school based on the loan that I co-signed on him. He's still demanding lots of money because he mismanaged funds. I mean, back then I was 19. My dad died. I was very vulnerable. I didn't understand what co-signing really meant. But 
Oh Lord, they had a 19, they had their 19 year old baby girl co-sign on her older brother's student, I guess I'm assuming older brother's student loan so he could become a doctor. He takes it, he misuses the money. You know what? I hate to say it, but sometimes family members need to be dumped. Dump them. Stop paying for them. This is four years ago. I, I'm sure this bill is not paid. Dump them. You know what? You're, 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 you're married. Your children are the priority. You don't need family. If this is family, no thank you. No thank you. But I did it because I thought it was out of a good place to help them out. But And now I'm left with, you know, monthly payments that they're not keeping their own side of the bargain. So... I want to maintain a good credit, um, and so I'm how much? How payment. much of this medical debt do you owe? It was two hundred and twenty-three thousand that we co-signed in Canada, in Canadian, and he went to school in the states. Um, it was not how we planned it. It was meant to be less than that, but he kept. So you, what? You, today you owe two hundred and twenty thousand dollars on your brother's medical school. All of us, we have it shared. My brother, myself, and my mom. Jesus. Wow. She was used. <laughs> I, I think I think she was guilted, used. They, they, they used her naivety against her is kind of what I'm gathering. Here, honey, here, baby girl, just go ahead and sign off on your big brother's medical bill. How much? Is it? it'll, it'll be about, you know, 200, two and a quarter by the time we're done. Okay, I'll do it. Oh, boy. And you know what? People can say, well, she could try to sue for the money, you know. Well, what are you, you know, trying to get blood out of a turnip, right? This is why you don't co-sign. You don't co-sign. You, you, you don't do it. But she didn't understand what it was. She co-signed at 19. And unfortunately, a lot of people think that if you co-sign a bill, they don't. A lot of people co-sign, even sometimes adults, they think it's easier to get rid, to, to get off of being a co-signer than it really is. It is not easy. Once you have co-signed a bill, it is next to impossible to get off that co-signing. Unless the person that you co unless the person that you um we're citing for miraculously does not need the money anymore can and can prove it and even then the lender may still go nah we're going to keep you because you're kind of like that little financial ace in the hole you you are the second go-to person if the first one falls through you don't co-sign i don't care if if if, if, if it's if it's life-saving procedure you do not i've already told I, i've made known to one of my siblings look you know what i don't care if i'm on my deathbed you will not co-sign any bills for me i am not going to tank you to save me in any way shape or form life is what it is you know you don't co-sign bills it is as good as you taking on the bill and sinking yourself losing your property losing your transportation and i've said over and over and i will continue to say it you are more powerful not to co-sign the hard part because you get to maintain control of your funds. That's what makes you more powerful. It's not to say you won't help. It's not to say you're cold and mean and all that. What it's saying is, look, you know, if I, if I can't keep my ship right, I'm not going to be able to help you. They, they got her while she was young and dumb. That's, that's when they got her. Yeah. Um, now I know much better. Now I understand what it means to co-sign, what, what it means. And this is what happens with student loans. Students go, oh, you know what, I, I, now I understand just how much a $50,000, $75,000, $30,000 student loan is. Now I understand how hard it is. Now I understand interest on the interest compound, yada, yada. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the responsibility really is. And I have to bear the consequences of decisions I made, but they keep asking, and it's caused lots of insults, and I've distanced myself, but I don't know why they feel that they have, that I have to give everything I have. Yeah, right is, now, did he get not, out of med school? Um, he, we took it, um, we got a loan from the bank. The no, did he bank. graduate from med school? Yeah, oh yeah. He, is he a doctor? He, no, he isn't. Why? So he's, uh, because he's only the school extra funds, um, and I can't do anything about it. I feel what, what is he? He's not a doctor, so what is he? Like, uh, you know, you have so to he, he, he owes the school money so they won't give him the diploma. 
Exactly. And uh, now he wants me to remit more money, and I'm explaining to him, now I have different priorities. I cannot. Good. Stand your ground. I know this is from four years ago, but stand your ground. <laughs> um, even if he doesn't become a doctor this year, he can try next year, but he has to work. You know, he has to work. He's 29, 20, 30. Everything's been given. Is this some sort of... Um... I, I'm not really familiar with family setups and stuff, but is this something where they're like expecting, where, where, where like the guy in the family is held more valuable than um, the women are? You know, like custom, I guess that is kind of thinking custom, because what it sounds like is they're put, putting all the resources towards this guy. The father passed away. So they see the son, or the mother sees the son, as now the new head of the household. And so all the resources are supposed to go to propping him up. And you know why? Because the mother doesn't want to work work when she, uh, she... She doesn't want to work till she drops. And so she's depending on her son to take care of her. Don't think the mother's... Don't think for a minute that the mother's doing this, you know, um, just on the kindness of her heart. M mother wants the son to get the degree... So he can take care of her. Because between these two people, none of them seem to want to work except for the daughter. That that that's kind of what I gather. Okay. What's what is that? What is that? Oh, I can't think of the fancy word. It has like an M in it. But but it's but it's mother's not doing this just to be nice. Mother has her own uh, hidden agenda. And her hidden agenda, the mom's hidden agenda is she needs her son to get into a good job and then she can go from having the mother can go from having the husband take care of her from having the daughter take care of her to now having the son take care of her sucks i don't like the mother given to him every time because he hasn't really had that sense of responsibility yeah. to really work well here's um, the problem okay your your family's toxic and they have boundaries that, isn't that the word i said i think i i think i said that i think i said toxic Kick them to the curb. You don't need to. You don't need your children hanging around this. Let them eat each other. And heck, you know, at this point, let the loan go. Hell, who cares? They can take it out of your retirement. Just make sure your husband knows. <laughs> Three issues, without a doubt. Um, yeah. They, they, um, there's all kinds of just relational violations here in this. It's just so sad to listen to. Um, so. When people think they have a right to uh, things that are over in your inside your boundaries, and then you put up a boundary and say no, uh, they almost always react with anger. Be, be, because their gravy train is disappearing. That's why they react with anger. The daughter, since she was 19, has been the gravy train, probably longer than that even. And mother, mother, neither one of these two family members are acting in the daughter's best interest. This is why the daughter needs to kick them to the curb and never look back. It's okay. It's okay. These are the type of relatives you can go ahead and lose relationships with. That, that You know, there's, there, there are those relationships that are worth saving, okay? And then there's even the neutral relationships. We don't, you know, just, just neutral, no love, no hate, no nothing. And then there's the ones that are totally toxic. Kick them to the curb. People who, people who feel entitled and you tell them that they're not, they're almost always reacted with anger. And so that's what happens when you put up a boundary. It's just standard process. So um, you're, this is not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Uh, and there's probably going to be a huge blow up at some point. But oh, heck, I wouldn't even make it a blow up. Ah, nah, nah, nah. Heck, at this age, I, just don't answer the phone. I won't even waste my time on it. Don't. Th these are people I would not spend my time arguing with. I don't spend my time bickering with. Just don't answer the phone. They're, they're, they're done. They're over. The sad part is you're on this loan. You know what? Let them figure it out. Let them figure it out. But that none of that means that you need to pay the money. You don't. I wouldn't pay a dime on this stuff. I would let it sit over there and rot. Um, That's ex exactly. Okay, so if all three of them are on the loan, great. If I were her, I, I wouldn't pay a dime either. He really, really wants to be a doctor. Mom really wants him to be a doctor because I guarantee it to you, she wants the son to support her in her old age. They can figure it out. That is not your job. 
there's no, no reason that you should have been on this loan, and there's no reason that you should pay it except that you now are legally obligated. And so, and, and what's sad is I thought to myself, well, may, maybe she could, you know, show it in court that she was used. But you know what? Unfortunately, it is what it is. Once you hit 18, um, once you sign on the line, once you say I do, it, it's like, you know, it, 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 it is what it is, folks. It is what it is. She can't. I don't see any legal leg to stand on, you know. Otherwise, all of us between 18, 19, 20, for all the mistakes we'd ever make, you know, we could go back on the debt. And unfortunately, it's just that's not the way it works. Same thing with student loans. You signed on the line because you wanted that four-year four year college experience. Well, yeah, yeah, you got it and the bill to boot. Many, many students have it. So you may have to go back and clean up something there at some point to get it off of your family. You're the only way to get it off of the family is that whole entire bill has to be cleared. It doesn't matter if she pays her third. She could say, I paid a third. So what? To the, This is why you can't sign off on loans. And I understand she was 19. It's why you need to be careful when you sign student loans, co-signing or not. When you commit yourself to that much debt, your immediate family, not your brother and your mother. But this is silliness uh, that they get to demand money from you. So um, you just need to be real quiet and real calm and real firm and just say, listen, I love you and I'm just not going to be paying on this. And I'm not going to be sending you guys money. And uh, I'll send you a copy of Henry Cloud's book, Boundaries. Um, it is the the consummate book on this subject and he sold tens of millions of copies of this book because every family every relationship almost always has some kind of a boundary thing in it all right well that is the end of this video all right guys so what did we learn in today's video do not co-sign for anyone ever regardless of your age i'm carrie this is student loan chit chat I want to thank you for joining me. I do hope you will consider subscribing and have a great day. Bye.